Hello everybody and welcome to another tutorial from Noseman and don't forget Noseman knows. So today we are going to focus on a couple of things uh, relating to thinking particles and in particular I'm going to show you number one how to troubleshoot various uh, setups and when I say troubleshoot I mean how to build setups knowing exactly what you're doing. This is going to help you learn how thinking particles work. And uh, the second thing is I'm going to show you how we can use a parameter like a particle's age and map it to something like the scale of the particle. And finally, how we're going to get that final scale and propagate it to an object so that the object grows as the particle gets older. So without further ado, one more thing. I'd like you to check out my very good friend's uh, YouTube channel. Now, many of you may know him. Well, uh, I guess um, more people know him than they know me. His name is Matthew O'Neill, and uh, he's the owner and creator of uh, 3D Fluff, uh, one of the oldest uh, people out there that do uh, fantastic uh, Cinema 4D tutorials. He's been doing this for, I think, 63 years. Uh, that may not be very accurate, but uh, anyway, his tutorials are stellar. So I'm gonna provide you with a link uh, in the description below. And go and check out his uh, tutorial, um, actually his uh, tutorial channel. Yes, that's what I was trying to say. And I lose my train of thought when I'm trying to think of too many things. Anyway, so I will start showing you thinking particles, but go check out his uh, YouTube channel. We may have a surprise very soon. Okay, so we are in Cinema 4D in the standard layout. And uh, what I'm going to do is uh, create a plane. And I'm just going to simplify the plane by making it one and one segment, and I'm going to make it editable because I'm going to use uh, P matter waves to emit particles. Now I'm going to keep it very simple, so I'm just going to add my espresso on the plane, and I'm just going to set up my layout here. So I'm going to put my espresso layout here. Then I'm going to go and grab my thing in particle settings and drag it somewhere down here. Fantastic. And uh, the last thing I'm going to do is uh, bring up the console. So the console is here, and uh, we're going to use the console to read uh, various uh, bits of data from uh, our particles. So I'm going to begin by doing a matter. So I'm going to create a P matter waves by writing matter there. If that doesn't exist, just click on the little magnifying glass. And uh, of course, in the P matter waves, let me enlarge my attributes, I'm going to drag the plane and drop it in here and rewind and press play and we have particles generated. I'm going to change the view type to uh, dots. Uh, it has ever so slightly less impact on the viewport. And I'm going to zoom in so we can see this a bit better. Good. So let's begin with a workflow that would allow you to read data from particles so that you know what's going on. So we created our particles and by default I'm not going to use any group so everything is going to be in the all group and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create thinking particles down here or just go and search here I'm going to do a uh, pass so just drag the p pass over here and uh, the next thing I'm going to do is use something called get data so get data and again right click you can find all these here uh, get data set data and, and all that helper get data there you go but um, it's very easy if you remember the names to just search them in here or if nothing selected you just untwirl uh, these and you try and find them in here so thinking particles and you can have them all here untwirled so get data not get theta get data so p get data. So the first thing you need to do is uh, tell the get data what particles you want to read. So I'm going to just pipe in all the particles. Now let's go and see what happens here. On the left side there's nothing else because all we need is just to read uh, some particle stream. But on the right it allows us to output any of these parameters. So I'm going to go with the age and the life and then command double click here to maximize it. Now here's the question. How do I know at any given frame for any given particle what the age and the life is? 
And there's a very simple method to get around that. So I'm going to go to the P-matter waves, and I'm going to turn this to a shot. And what I'm going to do is set a shot of 1 on frame 0, and a shot of 0, so I'm going to stop the emission of particles from then onwards. So I'm going to shoot one particle only. Now there's a slight limitation uh, that's been there for a while, which doesn't allow us to keyframe something here, then move to the next frame, change the number, 0, press enter. It reverts back to this number. Uh, but there is a way around it, which is quite simple, so don't panic. And all you have to do is, once you've set your first keyframe at frame 0, just right-click on the parameter, go to Animation, Show Track, and over here, I'm just going to do the following. I'm going to drop my P matter waves here so I can see it. And you can see that one keyframe. And I'm going to zoom in. And all I have to do is Command-click here to add another keyframe. And if I click on this keyframe, I can set this value to 0. So you can always add values using your uh, keyframe dots, but if for any reason that doesn't work, uh, especially in thinking particles, just bring up your dope sheet and go and add your keyframe here. So what I have now is I have emission 1 on frame 0 and emission 0 on all the other frames, which means that my thinking particle setup is going to emit one particle alone. There is, there is, there is, there is, there is, and it's gone. So the next thing I'm going to do is set my life to 30 frames, okay, which is one second. And in order to read the data, what I'm going to do is get rid of this. And if you go to the system presets, so this is how you're going to see it by default. The system presets in the string folder has something that says print to console. And it allows you to print two values to console. I'm going to take my age and put it in input 1. And I'm going to advance by 1. And you can see that the number we get is 0 0.33. What that number is, is actually the life of our particle. So this particle is going to have a life expectancy of 30 frames. This means 1 second. Now if I bring my calculator over and divide 1 second by 30 frames, this is the number I get, 0 0.0333, and that's what you see here. So in seconds, at frame 1, the age of my particle is 0 0.33 seconds, whereas the life of my particle, and I'm going to advance one more time, is always 1 second. So, because I've set it to 30 frames. If I put this at 15 frames, now it's half a second. So both the age and the life, as you can see from the little legend over here, age and life, are time outputs. And time outputs aren't normally seconds by default. So let's go and see how we can use my age and what the age is as it progresses. Now, Make sure you rewind and then you uh, clear your console. So what I'm going to do is advance one frame. We get 0 0.33, which is one frame of a 30 frame per second duration. Now, the second time it may give you two inputs, but uh, don't worry about that. That's uh, some sort of glitch. And then it's going to go 0 0.1. So three seconds is 0 0.1. Sorry, three frames is 0 0.1 of a second in a 30 uh, frames per second duration. And then it will go up, 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 up. And we're going to go all the way up until the particle reaches 15 frames. And you can see now no more numbers are added because we've reached the maximum lifespan. The particle doesn't exist anymore. It's dead. Long live the particle. So this is how age advances. It's in seconds. And uh, now let me show you another little trick. If I want a particular value of a particle to be associated to its age when this age is not fixed over here, what we can do is divide the age by the life. Let's go and do it and see what happens. Now, I'm going to go to my standard espresso and do a math. And I'm going to say age, life, 
and I'm going to change the function to divide. And I'm going to pump this in here. I'm going to rewind. I'm going to clear my console and advance by one. So moving, moving, forget that second little glitch. And what you will see is by the time the particle dies, it's going to be one. So it begins at that fraction of its uh, the beginning of its life, and it advances towards one. So basically, it goes from zero to one. So this division, when you divide the age by the life, for every given particle, you are going to get its age in a range from zero to one. And that is very cool. And why is it cool? It's cool because this applies to each particle, regardless of the difference of age they may have. If a particle can live up to 30 frames, and if I add some sort of variation here by 50%, with the method we've created here, that particle's age will always be from 0 to 1 after this division. And this allows us to create a range mapper. So I'm going to go express or calculate range mapper. And in the range mapper, what I can do is the input now we know is 0 to 1. So I can set the output to something like 5 to 12.5. Uh, All right, these can be any numbers. They can even be reversed. So the lower can be higher than the upper to make things shrink down. So now, if I put this in the input, rewind, clear it and press play, what you will see is that the range of numbers I'm getting are from 5 basically all the way to 12.5. So with this range mapper now, we can control how much, what, what the output is going to be. So we can feed it anywhere we want. We can use colors, we can use, that's a good thing about the range mapper. We can input any 0 to 1 or any range value and convert it into anything else. So what I'm going to do now is show you, first of all, how we can assign an object to a particle. And although there is the P shape, if I go here, type shape, I can get the P shape. And in the P shape, anyway, forget about this. We're going to use MoGraph. And um, what you need to understand is that MoGraph is a particle system. Now, it doesn't work with millions and billions of particles. It could in theory, but it's very slow as uh, thinking particles is. Um, not because the technology in MoGraph is not that good, but for other uh, limitations. But as far as um, the MoGraph context goes, it can handle uh, objects uh, that are derived from particles in a very efficient way. So I'm going to create a cloner. I'm going to set it to be instances so it's a bit faster. I'm going to set it to be object mode. So we're going to drive the position of the clones using an object. And I'm going to drop a cube in here. Just drop the cube. And in the cloner, in the object now, I'm not going to drop an object. I'm actually going to drop the particle group. So now if I press play, you will see that nothing... Oh, there you go. That's it. For 15 frames, because that's a lifespan of the particle. So I'm going to go to my P matter waves. I'm going to extend the life of this particle to, let's say, something like 150. And I'm going to change this shot. So I'm going to delete the keyframes and set this to something like 20. So we have these 20 cubes. Now I'm going to go and make my cube smaller. You can see it's quite huge. And that nothing's really happening with the scale and all that. And uh, that is uh, deliberate. If you go to the cloner, whenever we have a particle system, a thinking particle group, inserted as the object, we have these parameters available, particle scale and velocity stretch. We're just going to talk about particle scale for now. So forget about stretch and, and all that. So particle scale, when it's zero, then MoGraph has full control over the scale of the particles. But if I put it to 100%, then basically it's the thinking particles context that controls the scale of the particles. So this is how we are transferring the scale of a particle from thinking particles to the cloner. But we don't see any scaling here. And the reason is, well, we're not doing anything with it. So the next thing we need to do, and we've created this uh, range map, and that's fantastic. So the next thing we need to do is create a situation where the value from the range map, or whatever that is, is actually fed into each 
particle itself. Because all we're doing here is just a division and a remapping. We're not actually telling think to, thinking particles to do something with that value. And in order to do that, let me just stop this so it goes a bit faster. What I'm going to do is do something that's called set data. So you get the P set data. You tell it that we want the same particle stream. And in the set data now, everything we had on the get data on the right, we have it on the set data on the left. So I'm going to go to scale or size. I think I'm going to go with scale for this. Command or control double click. And what I'm going to do is drag this in the scale. So what we are doing here, let's understand the whole loop. The P pass reads the first particle, does all this little chain here. It gets the age and the life of that particle at that frame. It makes a division to find the uh, 0 to 1 um, age, uh, let's say, an, an analogy. And so it converts the time to an actual number from 0 to 1. Then we range map this to be 0 to 1 to map to 5 to 12.5. And then we pump this in that particle's data. So one particle goes here, then this data is here, and that particle's scale changes. Then we go to the next particle and the next particle. Let's rewind and see what happens now. So let's go to the side view. And you can see that the particles are growing as they go. So if I go to the range mapper and say, OK, I want to make this 0 to 12.5 or 0 to 130. What I'm controlling now is the size based on the age. And regardless of what the actual life of each particle is, it is going to be born at zero size, and it is going to die at 10 scale. Sorry, I said size. It's going to be born at zero scale, and it's going to die at 10 scale. OK, so this would be a way for you to utilize some data from the thinking particle context, manipulate it in a way that it makes sense for your purpose, and then feed it into the particle. And I can get rid of this console thing, which always makes things a bit slower. And then by putting the particle group as an object input in a cloner, and activating the particle scale, we are controlling the scale of the particles. The great thing about this is that once you've made this setup, and I'm going to make this file uh, available for download, you can go here and play around with all the parameters of your range mapper. So for example, right click and reset, and then command click to do this, and then drag this down. And now the particles are going to go bigger and then smaller. So you can do all sorts of things. And if you combine this with some concepts from the previous uh, video I did, by assigning certain particles to certain groups, you can change the behavior quite dramatically. And uh, you know, th once you get your head around this, it's not that complex. And adding to that, that you can save this file and reuse it, and just connect your objects and your, your cloners and all that, uh, this is a reusable setup because it's based on the default all group. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, do yourselves a favor and uh, check out um, um, 3D Fluff's uh, YouTube uh, page and uh, the amazing videos they've made. And uh, yeah, uh, feel free to comment, uh, ask questions, uh, follow on Twitter, um, go sign up on Cineversity, uh, buy Cinema 4D, then buy another copy and buy a copy for your friends, uh, get an MSA. Uh, I think I need to go now. Toodaloo.